Guys, please take a second and subscribe to this channel. Please do me a big favor and like this video right now. Welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about damping factor. It's a word that I don't really like or a measurement that I don't really enjoy the name damping factor because it's, uh, you know, besides it being sometimes called dampening factor or sometimes it's thought of how it controls your subwoofer only and other things like that. It's just a bad name for it. But what it's really trying to tell us is what the output impedance of the amplifier is to putting out the same voltage no matter what the load is on it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna test this Carver M500T home audio amplifier. This is a well-respected piece. I wouldn't call it high-end, it's kind of mid-fi, but it is a, a well-respected piece and it sounds, sounds good. Uh, we're gonna compare it against this DeMori Engineering 1504 just because it happens to be on my bench right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the frequency response of this on the audio precision. We're gonna use the SMD 81 amp dyno as our load bank. It's just set to eight ohms. And we're going to uh, do a sweep on this amp and we're gonna measure the frequency response into a resistor. It should be, should be flat. And then we'll do this amp and same conditions and it should also be flat. And then we're going to connect them to one of these Klipsch tower speakers, home audio tower speakers, two tens and a horn. And we'll do a sweep again and the frequency response should still be flat because a perfect amplifier doesn't care what's connected to it. It'll always have the same output voltage at all frequencies. So this is what the damping factor really tells us about is if I change what's hooked up to the output or if the impedance of whatever's hooked up to the output changes, like a speaker, how well can it put out the same level? All right, so first thing we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna have to put this on a one man show here. So I'm gonna put my phone on the tripod and we are going to measure the, the damping factor of this carver using the Audio Precision's automated damping factor test. I will zoom in on the graph here in a second. All right, fire this up. Got my amp dyno set to eight ohms. This is the output of the carver here. Start the test. It says disconnect the amplifier load, which I did. Here we go. Okay, now connect the amplifier load. There we are, hit okay. And there we have it. Zoom in here so you can see it. So here's the damping factor of the Carver M500 in a graph form. Frequency on the bottom, damping factor on the vertical. So let's just pick 100 hertz. So at 100 hertz, here's 10, damping factor of 10. There's damping factor of 100, so this is 10. 20, 30, so at 100 hertz, 10, 20, 30, it's about 32, 33. That's the damping factor on this M500T. About 32, 33. I hear people say, oh, as long as it's over 10, it's fine. All right, well, let's find out. Now let's move the probes and measure one of the channels of this 1504 over here. This is the signal. This is the probe. And here 
here's the output. Disconnect the output of the carver. Here's the output of the 1500 form. Okay, start. Disconnect load. We did, it's right here. Okay, connect load. There we go. And go. Okay. There is the damping factor of the Demori Engineering 1500 for. It's a little bit hard to see with the blue, but you can see what's going on here. At 100 hertz, okay, there's 100, there's 1,000. So 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, and some. Quite different. It's about six, let's call it 625. So this channel of this four channel, like we're on uh, channel four, Damping factor 625, damping factor 32. Quite different. Does it matter? Let's find out. There's a lot of different tests we could probably do. I think a, a real world one or a uh, you know pretty simple one to understand would be, let's do a frequency response sweep of both amps into an eight ohm resistor and then let's sweep them while they're hooked up to that tower speaker that that I showed. Okay. There's the frequency response of the DeMori Engineering app on an 8 ohm resistor. Twenty hertz to twenty kilohertz. You see that it is very flat at 20 hertz we're down about a tenth of a db all right that's on a resistive load now let's overlay the frequency response of the carver on top of that all right frequency response of the carver there it is it's a little different than the demore engineering amp our amp rolls off on the low end by a tenth of a dB at the end of the spectrum, and theirs has roll off on the high end about double what ours is at about 0.2 dB on the high end. But for the most part, I mean, those are fairly flat. Cool. Now, those are frequency responses of both amplifiers running an 8 ohm resistor, the amp dyno. More engineering amp, hook to the clips. Here we go. Make sure you heard that sweep. And you can see it in the in the graph. It's pretty hidden in there. It's uh you know, it's buried in there. You can see it has a little bit of a difference here, slight there. So it made a slight variation to the frequency response but not much. If we turn off the trace for the carver, there you can see that's the Demore engineering amp into a resistor and into a reactive loudspeaker. See the little bit of a difference there between 100 and 200 Hertz. It's pretty much a perfect voltage source. Okay. Let's hook the, uh, do the carver now. Hooked up. Okay, I think we're good. Let's put the uh, original carver back on the graph. Let's turn it on. I'm gonna zoom in on the graph while I sweep so we can see now we would expect if it had a really high damping factor that it would be 
close to its original. Here we go. Whoa. That's why I saved it for the finale. Two amplifiers, both of them measure flat on the bench. Both owner's manuals are gonna tell you that they measured flat on the bench. Even people testing them are gonna be using load banks and they're gonna say they're the same. And then you're gonna play them and they're gonna sound different. And here's an example of that. You can see what the low damping factor of this carver amplifier does for the frequency response. As that speaker is changing impedance because of, it's a two and a half way design with a horn. So you've got passive crossover networks. You've got a port. You've got a lot of things that are affecting, uh, affecting the impedance of it. That's affecting the output level, which is affecting the frequency response. If I did this on a so-called constant power amplifier at a high, high level, it'd be atrocious. So I hope this was informative. I'm gonna do another one of these and we're gonna do speaker wire versus frequency response in the next video. And we'll see if a cheap speaker wire versus a heavy duty speaker wire has any effect on the frequency response at the speaker. All right guys, thanks. Guys, please take a second and subscribe to this channel. Please do me a big favor and like this video right now.